is time once again for another Thought from the Word of God for our Tuesday Theology series. And I want to begin today by suggesting to you uh, that faith, by definition, is actually often contrary to what we perceive. Uh, let's start with the definition of faith. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 1, really gives us a good, solid definition of what faith really is. And the Hebrews writer says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen or not perceived. In other words, what the Hebrews writer is telling us is that it is our faith that gives us the confidence that we need in things that our eyes cannot see, that our eyes cannot perceive in this world. And many times what our eyes perceive and what faith demands of us are really at odds with each other. And I think all of the evidence that we need to, to prove this point is right here in Hebrews chapter 11, in some of the examples that we see here. There's some incredible examples of people who put their faith in what they could not see, what they could not perceive on their own. Uh, examples like Noah. Think about Noah, who uh, in verse 7 of Hebrews 11, we're told, was warned by God about things not yet seen. So Noah's eyes uh, were not something that he could trust to help him understand what God was telling him, to help him understand what God was warning him about. Noah's eyes, uh, Noah at no point in his life had ever perceived of anything like the global flood that God unleashed on this world. Uh, and yet, because of what God said to him, Noah built this enormous ark that was then able to sustain life for weeks on end while the earth was flooded. Uh, another example is Abraham. Uh, you jump down to verse 17 of Hebrews 11, and what we find out is that uh, Abraham was asked by God to sacrifice his own son. Now this had to be a very confusing thing for Abraham because Abraham had been told by God that this son was going to be the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham for his, uh, the generations to follow after him to be blessed through Abraham and, and through God's covenant with Abraham. But uh, instead of arguing with God, over what seemed like an unfair request, uh, instead of questioning God's seeming lack of compassion, uh, instead of refusing to serve a God that seemed so capricious, Abraham simply obeyed. Abraham believed uh, in God's word even when it seemed as though it was contradictory. He trusted the opposite of what his eyes told him, and that faith was then rewarded. And then there's one of my favorite examples from uh, the life of the prophet Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 6. In this chapter, we see that the Syrian army is, is bearing down on the town where Elisha and his servant are staying. And Elisha's servant looks out the window and he sees this army coming toward them and surrounding them, and he's scared to death of what his eyes could see. He's afraid of what he could perceive. And then Elisha prays to God and prays that God will open the eyes of this servant. And when God does that, this servant then sees something completely different. Because it's then that he sees God's army. Uh, this army of horses and chariots of fire that have completely surrounded the Syrian army. Faith, by definition, is often contrary 
to what we perceive. So let me ask you something. How much stock do you put in the Word of God? Are you reading the Word of God every day? Are you studying it and meditating on it as you attempt to see how it can apply to your life? If the examples of men like Noah and Abraham teach us anything, I think it's that with what God's Word says about reality is to be trusted far and above any of our own perceptions. And actually, one of our, our faulty perceptions is about the Word of God itself. One of our perceptions about the world around us is that if it's not riveting, then it's not worth our time. We critique movies and we critique TV shows because the storyline is too slow or the story is too mundane. We lose interest in teachers or preachers even the, that don't use theatrics to grab our attention. Uh, we've become so insistent that we be entertained that we're bored by simple ideas like carrying on a conversation or going for a walk. And as a result, when it comes to the Word of God, when we aren't enthralled every time we open our Bibles, then we're tempted to give up on regular daily reading of the Word of God. As G.K. Beale puts it in his book, we have deluded ourselves into thinking that only what is exciting is worthy of our attention and beneficial for us. But the Word of God is absolutely vital to our spiritual development. It is an integral part of our faith. And this is why Paul, as he's writing to Timothy, he tells them that it is the Word of God is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So consider the fact that if all we have is just a superficial knowledge of the Word of God, if we just have this basic, superficial knowledge of what our Bibles say, it's going to be incredibly easy for us to be misled then by the perceptions of this world, particularly the ones that are counter to the Word of God. And so we need to remember that faith, by definition, is often contrary to to what we perceive. And so I hope that you can use this message as a good reminder of the value of the Word of God and of the value of continuing to put our faith in what God says rather than what we often perceive. I hope that you have a wonderful evening and I look forward to getting to see you again very soon. Have a blessed day.